Hi and welcome back to Bike Speeds. This week we've got quite an epic service on this giant TCR. This bike was actually unrideable when it arrived to us. We're going to do quite a lot of work on this. Headset bearings, shorten the steerer tube, handlebar tape, cables, sorting out a problem with the front brake, waxing the chain. Quite an epic service on this bike so do stick around for this one. It's quite involved and we're going to get on with that now. Initially when a bike comes in I analyze the bike so you can see here the brakes are pulling the wheel to one side of the forks that's not good it's going to wear the wheel bearings stress the spokes we need to make sure that's okay when it goes out we've got quite a few cracks on the outers of the cables you can see there how that's splitting and you can see that initial surface rust forming there where that's beginning to deteriorate so we need to sort out the cables the chain itself is way past the 0.5 stretch that's recommended for an 11 speed so the fact we're putting a new wax chain on this one we're going to replace that chain and discard that one so that's initially what I'm going to do is take that off and that's the way I'm working with the service I'm weighing up the depth of work that I need to do the little problems that I can see before I actually even start to strip the bike down so I'll start to take components off weigh out which bits I need to replace which bits I need to service take those parts apart and get on with the actual work in hand so off comes that cassette you can see there quite grimy because we're putting a wax chain on this it's important to get any oil or grease residue off the remaining components we don't want to mix that with the wax so we'll need to put that through the ultrasonic cleaner i will also need to put the rear derailleur through now when i initially undid this and took the tail off of that frame i felt the cable move and that was a sign of why this bike wasn't shifting when it came in, that it actually had a broken cable. So we need to address the cables as well. And you can see there on the rear derailleur, a little bit of oil and grease buildup. We need to degrease that ready for the wax chain to go on the bike when we do that. Off comes the front derailleur. Again, you can see there's a little bit of oil residue on the back plate there. It's very dry as well. You can see there's no lubrication on that. We need to clean it up and lubricate it. Now you can hear there quite clearly the bottom bracket bearings have had it so again as i'm stripping the bike down i'm listening for sounds feeling parts and i know with this we need to change the bearings we also had a problem with this left hand pedal arm which i'll show you along the way but initially we're taking everything apart there so we'll tap out that chain set was a little bit stiff in there you can see it's got a thickening oil on the shaft which was actually holding that into the bearings so we will clean that up at the same time as doing the other components and now I'm going to remove the bottom bracket bearing so I put my extractor into there and we extract it out one side at a time so out comes the drive side cup and bearing and now I can remove the non-drive side cup and bearing I'm going to take these out before I clean the frame down it will actually help me with the cable routing for the cables as well to be able to get into that bot bracket area and also check that that is within tolerances and ready for a new bot bracket now I'm taking off the bottle cages this is actually a full service where we're also going to detail the frame and ceramic coat it so we'll take out all the bottle cages and lubricate the threads of those at the same time as the service remove the back brake we're replacing that back brake cable so we can remove everything off of here and get that all cleaned up and off comes the front brake as well so i'm not worried about the tails on the cables because we are replacing all the cables on this bike so we can just cut those off and get those off of the component as i'm taking it apart now with the front brake i noticed here there should be a lock nut on the back of that thread there you can see there it's fitted and on the right hand one there it's missing that will gradually unwind that brake will fall apart or cause an erratic brake strange feel to the braking so we need to put a new lock nut on there when we service that component now i'm putting a cable guide on this cable although i was aware it was broken i wasn't sure at what point within the frame it was broken but in this case we were able to get it right through to the handlebars so that was all good so out come the tails put a little cable guide onto that rear brake cable there get that through the frame feed it through i leave a guide in there it helps me to rebuild the bike when i'm actually putting everything back together and we're also going to pop out the handlebar tape and replace the outers right up to the shifters themselves 
this bike had actually been tipped over or lent over at some point and had damage on the bar tape in multiple places. Then I removed the tape which held the cables together. As you can see underneath it was blue which wasn't a problem, it was just a fun unexpected detail. Now I'm able to get to the cables. So out comes the brake cable there, outers off the bike, we'll cut new ones of those, put new outers onto the bike, new cables into the bike, and everything will be absolutely perfect when it leaves the shop. Now you can hear here, we've also got the headset bearings, very, very tired and worn. The customer did ask us to shorten the steerer tube on this one. So everything is coming off this front end. We're going to remove these spaces. He's obviously now happy with his ride height. He's quite a competitive rider, this chap, and he's actually quite young and agile, so he can sustain this very aero position during a race and during his training. So we're shortening the steerer tube to accommodate that new position. So out come the forks themselves from the bearings. We are going to replace those because of the wear that's involved in there. Out come the bearings now. Now you can already see there's a little bit of corrosion in the cups which we'll need to clean and you can see there on the bearings quite a bit of corrosion around the top edges of that. They've started to go rusty. The ball bearings inside the raises have started to rust and that rust is seeping out of the seals around the actual cups themselves. So they are life extinct and we'll remove those and get new ones in there. Next up, I'm going to address this steerer tube that he wanted shortening. This is definitely one for your local bike shop. We have a jig as I'm using there. We have a special carbon blade. Everything there is absolutely spot on as it's shortened. It's quite a, a risky manoeuvre because if you get that wrong, you can literally write your bike off if you get that measurement incorrect. So that is definitely one for your local bike shop and something that we were doing during this service. Again, everything has its torque settings, so I torque that expansion compression joint up. And then I'm also going to clean the steerer tube itself and clean out the bearing cups. Make sure that everything there is nice, all the grit is out, all the old greases and residue is out of there so that it's as fresh as the day it left the factory. And now I am going to put a little bit of grease in the cups. These bearings, you can see they drop into those cups. They're not a compression or press fit into the cup itself they're quite loose fitting they have a fitting at the top that puts the pretension onto the bearing which does mean you can get the slightest amount of movement on the bearings as everything is seating together and the grease will just help everything seat into its position stop any creaking groaning noises once the bike is put back together um, everything there will be absolutely spot on so we put on the various rings and fittings to get that to be able to be pre-tensioned on goes the stem on goes the pre-tensioner the cap of the bearing itself and we can just get that in its final position and you can see there they're flowing beautifully this bike will be a much much smoother ride it will centralize itself much much smoother on the road it won't tram or try to veer off it will run quite nicely now i'm going to wash the bike down so i start with a snow foam to loosen the dirt this was quite a tricky frame. It's a matte frame, so you can end up with residue and watermarks, fingerprints, and they're always, always very tricky matte frames to really get them looking nice. But we'll wash that down, clean everything up, and then we will give this a polish and a ceramic spray just to make sure that all those fingerprint marks and watermarks and various marks that end up on it are off of that frame, and it will be absolutely popping out at us when we finish this cleanup and will look just as it did when it left the factory. So I'm using Auto Glim Resin Polish. With matte frames, I always recommend using this in a small area first, maybe at the bottom of the bottom bracket to make sure that your paint or finish will sustain this polish without actually shining the bike up. This is a matte satin finish on this bike and it's actually gel coated so it doesn't actually affect the final finish of the bike but it will draw out all those marks and any debris and dirt that's on the bike will lift off with this polish. So that's why we are doing this one with polish because it won't actually shine the bike. It will clean off all those marks nicely without putting a shine on the bike. So we're using microfiber towels to polish that down. Quite happy now with the way that's coming along. I can see all the little marks disappearing. Very, very pleased with that. And then I'm going to ceramic spray this frame as well. 
Now, our channel isn't sponsored by anyone. So we have a website where you can buy all the products we use in these videos. So these polishes, ceramic sprays, tooling, the frame protection stickers you see us use in other videos, the cables, chains, no end of bits that we actually use in the videos we do sell. The link for our website is always in the description below. So please do check that out when you're next online. Next up, I'm gonna clean up this Mavic wheel. I actually quite like these wheels. The braking surface on these has little lines, little grooves on them. And for a carbon wheel, the braking surface on these wheels is absolutely brilliant. You really get a sense of security with the braking on those wheels. They're great wheels. Now we had here a bolt that was seized. This is a great reason why you should grease your chain set bolts before you put them in because you can get that frozen bonding that you get with dissimilar metals so we're going to actually clean this up and then lubricate those bolts which you'll see along the way next up we're going to take the derailleur itself apart we're going to put quite a few of these parts through the ultrasonic cleaner other parts we're going to wash down so we like to separate everything out before we actually clean them in depth so in goes the cassette the derailleurs the brakes various things like the jockey wheels there they go through for about 15 minutes we don't use any heat so that we don't damage the parts in any way then we wash off that degreaser so that it doesn't continue to work away at the part beyond what we want it to do then we dry these down we blow them out with an airline do various different things to make sure these are absolute dry as can be once they are washed off before we re-lubricate them so all these are the bits that have come out of the ultrasonic cleaner that we're just washing down now we're using one of our detailing brushes there again they're available on our website as i mentioned before a lot of these things we use in the video if it's something you like there do check that out next up we're cleaning down the chain set and the big and small rings there to make sure everything there is nice and in-depth clean now this was an issue we had with the left hand pedal arm they have this safety plate between the bolts should have that little peg there in the middle on the right hand one there that came off the bike that's missing and on the left hand one there it's a new plate that we're going to put in so we'll pop that in that shows that if everything else fails like your bolts on the pedal and the tensioner fail you've got that peg to stop that arm coming off so that's a very important safety feature and that was missing on this bike now i'm just going to begin to lubricate everything so I always like to lubricate the arms of these just to make sure that those chain rings will separate again. Next time I service the bike just helps the bonding of the materials together. And we've also lubricated the bolts as well. So they'll go in. So I know next time I service this chain set, I will have no problem getting it apart. I'll have no problem getting it together and everything will clean up nicely next time. Once that's together, I'll talk that up. I talk this up before I put it on the bike because front derailleurs are a left right action so we want everything tight and where it needs to be to make sure that our adjustments are precise when we put that together jockey wheels being greased now premium grease on those on the pivots that go in the center there to make sure they're nice and then i'm using a park tool thread locker to hold the pivots of the derailleur jockey wheels in place in the cage of the derailleur that way we won't have any of those coming loose on a ride and causing problems. You do see it occasionally, so we want to stop that happening. So that's absolutely spot on. And then I also lubricate the thumb adjusters I'm using a little bit of our copper grease there on the thread and then general purpose grease on the actual thumb adjuster itself. These will often seize. So I do like to make sure all thumb adjusters on the bike are lubricated. And that's just good practice for my servicing technique going to lubricate the spring stop that corroding they're very prone to corroding you'll often see those where they're rusty and then i'm just going to lubricate the pivot points on the derailleur itself with a general purpose oil and i'm now quite happy with that and it's the same process on the front derailleur so i'm lubricating the spring lubricating the pivot points i've had so many front derailleurs that don't shift at all and we're completely seized that after a lubrication work perfectly the oil makes a huge difference at fighting the corrosion buildup over time. Now I'm going to sort out this missing bolt on the front brake. So we just found a nice stainless steel matching thread bolt there to lock off. And that now is safe and secure. 
so that's a good thing that this bike has had the safety plate on the left hand pedal arm and that missing bolt on the safety lock nut on that front brake sorted out within this service and now we're going to also lubricate up this brake quite happy there and then of course you've got your skewers they're very prone to going rusty inside your wheels so whether it's a through axle or a skewer you want to make sure that's lubricated i've had quite a few through axles now seized in wheels and they are very very tricky to get out if they've been lubricated like this before they went in the bike that problem wouldn't have happened so it's good practice to sort those out as well now i'm going to wax the chain this is going in m speed wax I'll leave it in there for about a minute to make sure the wax gets complete contact with the chain. I then remove it and let it completely harden off for about 10 or 15 minutes. We can break that chain off to make sure that it's nice and flexible again. The wax seeps into the rollers of the chain. It's a great way of lubricating the chain. It's nice and dry. Then we dust the molly bedlam and PTFE powder over the chain. This is supposed to give 6% less friction and it's 100% water resistant so we coat the chain itself with a little bit of the end powder and we also do the actual cassette itself as well with this the anti-corrosive properties stop the cassette from rusting so quickly which is the main thing you're battling with chain waxing and just gives that nice finish to the wax process for us to present to the customer and um, I will grease the hub itself to help again with future servicing to be able to get the cassette off of that hub next time so on goes that lovely finished cassette all degreased nicely powdered ready to go onto the bike we will just talk up the lock ring there and that is now absolutely ready to go next up i'm going to start to recable the bike so we will start off with the gear cables these are our super slick cables. These are a nice tightly wound stainless steel cable. I love these cables. <laughs> They're absolutely great, really. When you run your fingers along, they feel so smooth compared with most other cables. And they really are a very, very nice cable. Don't have any problem with these cables. They're great, really. I'm going to also take those onto the bars to get those in their final position so that when I feed them into the frame, I can get everything in a nice position on the bike make sure the lengths and everything are all okay and as i want them so that's what i'm going to do there before i actually put the bar tape on i'll just tighten those onto the handlebar there so that they are ready to go first off i'm going to pop the rear brake cable through the frame so that goes through we've got those little frame fittings there that we need to tighten up before the cable goes in because then that will be in the way of tightening those up so that's quite good there and then the derailleur cables themselves front and rear so that's the front one going in there they have their own fitting on the frame which we need to get them into the inner housing for the cables was nice and free no blockages which is good news and i will then just use a cable guide to get the final one in through the bottom of the chain stay there and out of the back of the bike into the rear derailleur and a little bit of outer for the rear derailleur there as well so that's good and then we're going to press in our bottom bracket now this press that I've got here sits on the outer edge of the actual cup of the bearing so it's not actually pressing the bearings it's pressing the cup itself into the frame so there's no chance or risk of damaging those brand new bearings and they go in there absolutely spot on and lovely. Just a little bit of grease on the chain set to help it through the bearing and help the corrosion aspect everything goes in there nicely on goes that now safe left hand pedal arm a little bit of pretension on the bearing there and go the bolts and once they're in I will just torque those up before we put the front derailleur on and that way again I can make sure that left right movement of the front derailleur is precise and where it needs to be before I start doing my adjustments so on goes the front derailleur and on goes the front derailleur cable amazing how many of these cables on this generation I see threaded wrong on the front derailleur they often go the wrong way on a little peg that's on the back of those that people often miss so I just cut that cable off and goes a little tail end onto that and now we can start with the rear derailleur and goes the back wheel I'm going to actually adjust this rear derailleur hanger so I put that in there now and I just use the rim of the wheel to get that square it was a little bit bent it wasn't quite right so we checked it across four points on the rim got that absolutely spot on before we fitted the rear derailleur 
happy to let it square now so I will remove the tool and then the wheel and carry on with fitting the derailleur. This wouldn't have changed at all well when it came in due to it not being aligned. I see a lot of bikes that won't shift smoothly and it turns out to be the derailleur hanger throwing it all off. So now in goes the new cable. This whole bike will feel completely different. The shifts will be far more sharp with all the new cables. Now I'll cut off the cable and use a cable guide to get the end on neatly. Next up, I'm putting in the rear brake. This was loose if you remember when it came in. It had moved over to one side, which led to it pulling the wheel over one way each time it was pulled. Again, all new cables make a big difference to how that will feel when it's pulled. I use the same cable guide as before for a nice uniform finish to all cables, which I personally think is a nice detail. Now onto the front. Again, a little bit of copper grease on the mount itself to stop that bonding into the frame. That will make it a lot easier again to service in the future. And on goes the front brake cable. So that's popped in there. And like I say, we can just lock that off and then use our cable guide, which we'll see now just there, to get those the same length as the front and rear. It's just a quick and easy way of me getting those the same front and back. And we can now put in the wheels and begin to finish our bike and sort out the adjustments on the bike as we go so front wheel in front brake is now pulling square rear brake in rear brake is now pulling square lovely wax chain going on the chain set and freshly cleaned and powdered rear cassette new quick link in there i'm going to pop a little bit of our anti-seize copper grease into the frame threads there that will actually stop those binding and i often see bottle cage holders that are over tightened or seized or no end of problems we get with bottle cage bolts but if a little bit of practice of greasing those before you put them in and not over tightening them they'll go on for the entire life of the bike without any problems if they're treated correctly in the first place next up i'm going to put the handlebar tape on we've got a nice thicker bar tape here nice feel to it finish off the tail when I cut this, I always try to make it so that the actual pointed part of the final bit of tail is underneath there, so that you can't see it from the top and you can't feel it from the top. Same with the tape that I'm putting on the end there. I will make sure that that finishes off right around the bottom, again, so that you can't see it and it really looks neat and tidy then when you've finished your bar taping. Up and down the gears, make sure the adjustments are all correct. So that is correct. That's running nicely now up and down the gears. Very, very pleased with that. Front derailleur shifting nicely between each ring. Nice and smooth. Everything there is working perfectly. Brakes are working now. Absolutely spot on. They're actually nice and square. The wheels aren't being pulled over one way or the other. They're pulling nice and square and evenly on the rim itself. And then I can now start the process of going through the bike and checking all the torque wrench settings. You can see there that brake lever was loose. So that needed talking up, this brake lever was loose, that needed talking up. And we actually had a nameplate issue here. It was a little bit rattly and loose, it had a bit of tape on it, so the rider had taped this thinking it was going to fall off. But actually all it was was the two little threaded bolts hold that together there, you can see. Just a little couple of turns on those, tightened that up. That's now absolutely as it should be. So it was quite a save there really for him that that never actually fell off or lost those little bolts out of there. So we can peel these tape off of there and that now is absolutely spot on and a little detail that is now getting this bike back on point and back to where it needs to be for a rider of this caliber. So we're now going to just talk up the rest of the bike. Obviously we've changed these bearings so these need checking for sure and they're absolutely spot on now. We can check the pinch bolts for the brakes, the brake pads themselves torque in that mount so it doesn't come loose like the rear. Onto the seat post bolt which was very loose that was very dangerous and over time could have been an accident waiting to happen. The saddle clamp was also loose which could have ended up similar accident but they've both been torqued up safe which is good. The same drill with the rear brake I torque the pads so that they don't move on the rims which again is a common fault I see. So that's everything safe and secure, completely adjusted and working perfectly. And finally, the rear derailleur. First we do the mount, then the pinch bolt. We're really, really happy with this bike. 
really looking nice the paint came up lovely all the components came up nice everything is working as it should so i'm very very happy with this bike i hope you've enjoyed this video if you have please do subscribe to the channel please do like the video do drop a comment below and we'll see you again very very soon bye for now